Better here. Um, why did you write about Sam Patton back in April for The Atlantic? He's certainly not only not a household name, but not even a name that's really been on a lot of people's radar at all in conjunction with this case. Yeah, so I was researching Konstantin Kalim because obviously he is a major figure in the Russia investigation, being as close as he is with Paul Manafort. Mm -hmm. And I got a tip that actually Konstantin Kalimnik was not just operating overseas. He had actually opened up this company in 2015 with this operative named Sam Patton. So I started researching Patton, and I learned that he is actually very much like Manafort, kind of like a gun for hire, has been working overseas for a long time for kind of shady people. And he and Kalimnik actually met in Moscow in 2001 when they were both working for this organization called the International Republican Institute, kind of like a democracy promoter, um, which is kind of ironic when you look back on it now. But they kept in touch over the last couple decades, and they're really fond of each other. They found places to work together um, over the last two decades. That's what Sam Patton told me anyway. And when I was digging into this further, it just made me realize the extent to which Kalimnik, I was really looking at this through a frame of Kalimnik, had managed to kind of ingratiate himself in Washington politics. Mm -hmm. He was working for this lobbying firm. He was a principal in the lobbying firm. And he was lobbying, really, the, the whole purpose of this company was lobbying. Crossover. I did not know about that before reading about it in your piece in The Atlantic in, in April. And I didn't really know what to make of it. That's when we were, uh, there had been a lot of questions about whether or not the Trump campaign's data operation might be a key part of any substantive invention. Um, what do you know about Patton's role at Cambridge Analytica with the parent firm of Cambridge Analytica? That's something that we know from your reporting, but we, we didn't know it, uh, or we didn't see any, any anything about it explicitly in the charging documents today. Right, so there are two things that are really interesting about his work for both SCL Group, which is the parent company of Cambridge, and Cambridge itself. So in 2014, he started working in Oregon for the parent company, SCL, and he was focusing on micro-targeting, which of course we know was a big part of the Trump campaign's data operation in 2016. Um, so he was working on that in the run-up to the midterm elections, and then he ended up working for Cambridge Cambridge Analytica again in a campaign and a project that they did for about your contact with him did he give you any indication that he was speaking with Robert Mueller that he had been approached by the special counsel's office that he had given testimony we now know because of today's events said he lied during that testimony attempted to obstruct their investigation and destroyed documents after talking to them we also know that not the formal proffer of information which eventually became cooperation did he did he let you in on any of that when you talked to him so that's the thing that I was most interested in when I reached out um, I wanted to know if, if he had been contacted by Mueller because of course he has all these ties to Manafort and Kalimnik and the people that they worked with and he told me only that he had spoken to relevant government entities and I assumed that that meant you know uh, Congress um, maybe the FBI had reached out to him once or twice but he did not give me a firm answer on whether or not he had been interviewed by Mueller of course now we know that he in fact was but but he was very coy, and he would not go into much detail about the work that this company that he set up with Konstantin Kalimnik actually did. Mm -hmm. I asked him point blank, well, you say that it was working on behalf of foreign clients. Did you have any kind of domestic messaging role here in the U.S.? And all he said was, no, we only represented clients outside of the U.S. So he seemed very eager to hide the fact that he was, in fact, lobbying on behalf of foreign clients in the United States, which, of course, would explain, in turn, why he did not register as a foreign agent. Right. The Justice he was Department. working for foreign clients, but he was lobbying the U.S. government on their behalf, and that's what he pled guilty to today. Uh, Natasha Bertrand, um, I want you to go right back out there and keep doing <laughs> what you're doing. We've learned so much about this story from your work. Thank you for being here. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank All right, we'll be right back. Stay with us.